and welcome to the Old Man Orange Podcast. I'm Spencer Scott Holmes. And I'm Ryan Dunnigan. And I got a little bit of an opener for you. Um, this right here, it's uh, it's not even, it's almost worth bragging about. But regardless, I'm going to kind of brag about it for a minute anyway. Uh, today I mm-hmm. went and posted uh, two pictures I made two pictures uh, and just posted them today, both on uh, fa- uh, actually on fa- Facebook, Instagram, and uh, and uh, Twitter. You know, I'm not really I'm not very active on that shit, so I figured out if I could help push the podcast, might as well be. One of the pictures I posted actually got a favorite, and I didn't know who this guy was, so I just clicked on it. His name's Mike Chat. His avatar is half of it's it's an Asian dude. Half of his face is normal looking, the other half is a Power Ranger helmet. I looked down. Aside from being like a martial arts expert, this guy's apparently a Power Ranger in like one of the later incarnations. I don't really know which one this is. So I got a fan that's a Power Ranger. I'm totally going to fucking brag about that now. Oh, that's badass. I mean, that in itself, doesn't matter, doesn't matter what generation of Power Rangers it is, that's fucking yeah, sweet. So, I mean, I, uh, I mean, it's one of those things I'm not going to push my look. Like, can some like follow him on Twitter? I'm like, can we be friends? <laughs> you know, I drew this one picture. <laughs> what are you doing? On a Sunday at two in the morning, yeah. you like this one picture. I mean, like it, it's it's weird. I it's like we walked right past. It's it's so fucking dumb to me because we literally walked right past the Green Ranger it, slash White Ranger. It's <laughs> fucking bump shoulders with him and doing like what the fuck is that? Guy and like hair? San Diego <laughs> Comic Con, and not San Diego and Sacramento Comic Con. Yeah, I don't know. Same. Yeah. I have San Diego, Sacramento, the one that's not not nearly, nearly as big. As it's like okay, think of whenever you tell people you're going to Comic Con. Oh, so you're going to San Diego? No, going to Sacramento. Oh, I thought you were going to the Arizona one. No, no, Sacramento, <laughs> the San Diego, <laughs> uh, Sacramento one. I'm sorry, I was just thinking, I was thinking the opposite. So, no, Sacramento though. We we literally bumped shoulders to that guy, walked right by him. I'm like, oh, that was a Green Ranger. How about that? I only had like three action figures of that guy and had the movie and watched them from my childhood. And played with them in the bathtub. No, you put them fucking words like, in my mouth. Me and don't, him don't, almost like a gay moment. Don't, be, don't put that shit on me. Don't put that shit on me. No, that was you, dude. <laughs> that was you. <laughs> no, I took Johnny Quest figures into the bathtub. No, it was uh, with me. It was uh, it was Star Wars figures and GI Joes. <laughs> so you might have had a gay experience with Harrison Ford. Well, no, they're, they're going to the water planet. They're going to the fucking water planet. Well, yeah, it's, and, it's know, not like so. an actual gay experience. It's just you know a couple guys in a bathtub naked, like. Yeah. <laughs> Gee, Chewy, we're all alone out here at this raft. What else are we gonna do? Roar! Just take it, Chewy. Just take it. Roar! He's a giant compared to us, Chewy. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but uh, what was I gonna say? So, but it's so fucking weird. I got this weird surge of like, wow, a Power Ranger li- who I don't know likes something I did, but at the exact same time, I'm just kind of like. It's so fucking weird. I don't even know who this guy is. and know who he was till he clicked the favorite button. And yet I passed like a childhood hero of mine. I'm like, oh, who that guy is. Oh, well, speaking of also kind of shout outs and whatnot, um, there's a guy on YouTube who's just left a, a copious amount of comments. His name's RJ Reviews. And at first I saw the name. I just looked. I'm like, oh, RJ. That must be RJ leaving a comment. <laughs> and then I went farther and it's like, oh, it's not the same RJ. But uh, he left a bunch of uh, reviews on a bunch of the podcast episodes, and he's became a pretty big follower, actually. He seems to really like our material, like the last handful of episodes. He went back and listened to a handful of the retrospects and so on. So I just wanted to give him a shout-out, too. RJ Reviews? Yeah, well, that's what his YouTube name is. That's what his name is. I, I'm sure his he last name is. He wasn't born not. that way, I don't think, but <laughs> it was just it was <laughs> his last name's Reviews. Yeah. There's got to be somewhere where there's someone whose last name's reviews or something like that. But yeah, yeah. no, like, well, awesome. Like back in the day, it's like, what was your trade? Well, I was a reviewer, so we were the reviews family. Well, that's one of those things because you don't. I guess a lot of times you don't think about it, but I guess the way they get a lot of their last names was like Smith. Like, okay, so you're a blacksmith or some kind of craftsman of some kind, or or some tailor. Or- yeah, something to that effect. So, I mean, review, I guess, what, what would you review back then? Like, you know, I guess back in the ancient day, like, you know, I went yes. to the late... Somebody probably had to review a play and kind of, like, be out there but be like, think... Come ye, come ye, come see the marvelous Shakespeare play. I give it two thumbs up. You think that, would, al- you think that would almost, like, by the time they, like, kind of came up with last names, though, like, that would be, bef- like, before, like, after that, though. You know what I mean? You mean, like, past or- that? Yeah, yeah, I, I think I think that like well, yeah, past that probably. Huh? Maybe just like 
the recent review and our sh- the shitty fucking table that by the guy made down the road, you know, <laughs> stirring shit up with all the other, the other Smiths, like all like the fucking like blacksmiths are like, man, that that reviewer, that reviewer guy, he is fucking with my fucking business, man. Fuck this dude. <laughs> Fuck those reviewer people. Just the guys up there next to him. I can't hear you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Someone's like, yeah, we'll hear you this fucking spear. And just like chucks it at him. It's just sticking to the wall. And that's what I think your fucking reviews. Oh, uh, we, just to clarify, RJ, we're not talking about your your ancestors. Yeah. I'm not saying that's you. <laughs> just trying to figure out if someone did have the last name reviews, how would that come about? But yeah, maybe I'm just, I think this this ran out of steam like probably three minutes ago. Anyway. Probably. No, no, no. RJ review is pretty cool. Been having some cool conversations with him. About everything from Resident Evil to Mad Max and so on. Good guy. Good guy. I'll have to check out some of his stuff. Is he on YouTube? He is. And I felt okay. kind of bad because I saw he had some posts on there. Because sometimes I just don't ever check the YouTube one nearly as much. Because you know, it's always that thing. There's only so much time in the day to check every single one. So sometimes YouTube always is kind of like, here, have a fucking episode. And then I'll get to it later on. And, and it's like, I, I got to share this Podomatic one and the iTunes one and so on. So sometimes it takes me a while, and I'm like, oh, fuck, there's somebody leaving comments on YouTube? Let me get back over there. I feel bad whenever I fall behind on the Paint It Black podcast, because I really do like those guys. I'm usually like one or two episodes behind. I'm way behind on the Urban Toledo gang. I just started listening to Bold and Belligerent, and I like what I've heard from those guys. But yeah, there's some... uh, I'm going... I'm kind of starting to... I mean, I've always kind of listened to other podcasts, but I'm just recently kind of starting to talk back to other podcasts. And I don't know what it is. There's this weird thing when they actually kind of mention you you on their show of like something you actually talked about. It, 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 there is that initial like, oh, the famous person kind of knows me, <laughs> even though because, you know, <laughs> there's just that there's that thing of like, I'm never going to meet this person. I, they're just the person I listen to inside the box. You just kind of have that mentality you've had since you were a kid. You just, oh, wow, we can kind of reach out to each other now. It's kind of trippy. Yeah, exactly. That's always kind of neat. I mean, I know this is this is no revelation, but I just it's something I just I was always kind of like, oh, they're never going to read my email. What's the point? But now, actually, you know, I know if you just kind of throw enough stuff out there, somebody's bound to pick it. Eventually, something's going to stick. Maybe I got to do that with uh, with uh, I'm already forgetting his name. Uh, Mr. Blue Ranger, Blue Ranger, who I just found out about Mike Chat. Maybe just do that with Mike Chat. We'll become friends one day and he could teach me his Power Ranger skills. Well, speaking of kind of somewhat in the same vein of superhero news. Did you see that? It came out, I think, about two weeks ago, but there was a new Batman movie. New Batman movie. Um, It was called Batman Animal Instincts. It was an animated one. Whoa, no. Is this... Oh, wait, 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 wait. Is this the... um, Is this like the uh, aimed at kids ones? It's like he teams up with Flash. Yeah, it's like like the DCU movies, but it just has a little bit more like kid-friendly vibe. Like it's like the PG. I didn't see it. It didn't really jump out at me. Penguin has a bunch of robot bad guys out or something like that. I kid you not. It was actually, I bought it and it it was pretty darn good. Really? I liked it a bit. I guess I just look. I I mean, like you got to kind of go into it. Don't Mm -hmm. expect it to be kind of like the adult ones. You know, if you go into it sort of with uh, almost like a Brave and the Bold feel, Mm -hmm. that's what it is. Because it does kind of, you know, it's a little cheeky. It's got some funny moments in it. But yeah, you got Batman, Nightwing, fucking Red Robin actually gets some credit for once. Uh, And then you got Green Arrow and Flash. And I'm assuming it's Green Arrow and Flash because they're like, hey, you know, the CW show is popular. And they're probably also trying to build them up just for like the eventual uh, cinematic movie universe. Yeah, so just throwing them out there more. But... The cool thing, too, is, like, you really don't get Green Arrow in enough, like, animated movies like that. In fact, I don't think he's really in... Other than uh, New Frontier... Unlimited. Justice League Unlimited. Well, that's a TV show. I'm talking about the DC animated movies. Uh, yeah. New Frontier, he was kind of... He... I mean, he had that little he had the little short, but I'm not counting that one near, as much. You're right, actually. He, he hasn't like, really been. And I mean, I want to say there was like an evil version of him in um, Crisis on Two Earths. Beyond that, though, now you mention it, I don't think he has. Yeah, been. maybe I think you're right there. Like, it, it wasn't him. It was but, like um, his so, evil yeah. parallel or something. So that's one thing that's kind of cool to see Green Arrow in there, you know. And then plus Red Robin. I mean, fucking Tim Drake. Yes, he gets the legacy of being in the, you know, the fourth season of the Batman the Animated Series, but. You know, past that point, and once Damien came along, he literally got fucking out of the way, you, of the whole picture of Batman. You just don't get enough Tim Drake mm-hmm. anymore. <laughs> I just, I see, like, when Damien dies, <laughs> I just see when Damien dies, they're all, like, grieving at the funeral. And, you know, 
Tim is waiting there longer. He 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 see like probably Bruce is probably the last one to leave, but Tim is like, no, no, I'm gonna outweigh Bruce. And he sits there like fake comforting Bruce, like, it's okay, Bruce, it's okay. I called Alfred. Just go home, get some sleep for once. Just for once. It's okay. And he just talks Bruce into eventually leaving once Alfred comes up in the Mercedes Benz, takes him off, and like, mm-hmm. <laughs> like fucking uh Tim's like Finally, just fucking pulls his dick out, starts pissing <laughs> right on the grave. <laughs> Give him the bird. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's your, like, I, there's like, there's one of my favorite Simpsons skits, and they're like at this petting zoo, and then they see a sheep, and they're like, oh, look at the little baby sheep. And then there's another sheep, and they're like, oh, that one's almost even cuter. And then it goes to like a third sheep, and it's just like drawn like super cute and stuff. And then the first sheep, Walks right in front of it, and then Homer just leans in and goes, out of the way, you, and pushes him out. <laughs> I forgot about that part. <laughs> like, and that's almost how I feel. Like, you got all these Robins, and then once you got the Damien, fucking, you got Tim Drake walk one. back in, and it's like, out of the way, you. That's what DC kind of did with them. Like, all right, well, I mean, he went and, he went and manned the, uh, um, he was leader of the new Teen Titans or whatever, but mm, I... I don't give a shit. I mean, I, 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 I wanted to care. Teen Titans is one of those things I wanted to care about the Teen Titans. I really wanted to. That's right when I was starting to get into comics. Like, you know what? I'm going to hop into Teen Titans. Jeff Johns is writing it. I'm a teen. I'm a teen. They're teen. I can relate. Jeff Johns is writing Teen Titans. He writes Flash. Flash is cool. Right, man? And He's hip. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why I'm doing like 90s kid in like, you know, 2000 and like five. But yeah. So. Oh, I got a 90s kid thing to tell you too afterwards. But carry on. So then I, I, I forced myself to read like, you know, two Teen Titans, not like graphic novels. And they weren't like bad or anything. Thing, but they just didn't really grasp me. I'm like, I just got to get into it, man. And then I just like, um, I'm like, you know, I don't care about you and your fucking teenage problems. I want to see you punch some fucking people and stop like, man, Batman won't let me be my own. Like Tim Drake was pretty cool for the most part, but there was that whole thing of like, man, you grown up superheroes just got to let us be us, man. You know, you're not always right. You know? So I just got, yeah. and that, 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 that could be true. But at the same time, it's like, I don't give a fuck. Let's, I just want to see, yeah. I want, I just, I, I kind of want to see my already well balanced at that age. I kind of like already want to see my well balanced, like, like, uh, like a mentally stable, like adult characters. Exactly. But, um, yeah, at some point, check out that Batman, uh, a limited, uh, animal instincts. It, it's actually pretty darn cool. It's also got, uh, the pretty much the villains in it. You got penguin, then you got man bat. Um, even though he's not technically a villain, but, uh, Cheetahs he's in like, it. He's like, he's like the Kurt Connors of uh of uh DC. Yeah, the lizard. Oh yeah, Croc's in it. Speaking, of, thank you for the reminder. And then um, uh-huh. and Croc looks like fucking Godzilla in this one. Like he just looks like a miniature Godzilla. <laughs> and then uh, there's it's a blue beetle villain, but he looks kind of like Gorilla Grodd. Oh, is he the guy with the brain? Like it's he's like a robot ape. Yeah, yeah, and is easy like. All sophisticated and shit. Yep, that's the one. I, so, I don't remember his name, but I know who you're talking about. Yeah. So they got all those in there, um, and it does. It has that kind of like it's got some. It's got a mix of seriousness, but then it's got like the lighthearted comicalness to it as well, and the superhero feel. But um, if, yeah, just the key thing. I think the only reason why some people don't like this one is if they go into it expecting it to be pretty much like the Batman versus Robin movie, then you might be a little bit let down. But if you kind of go into it going, okay, I'm something like, you know, Batman Brave and the Bold. It's really good. I liked it a lot. Some from what I saw in the trailer, it almost looked kind of like this was sort of a a long like pilot episode. They're probably using this to try and sell kind of, try and sell like if this movie sells well, maybe we can start up and this could be the next Batman series. Well, what they're doing with this one is they're going to make a, they're making another movie that's coming out later this year for it. So, I think they're trying to do I think it's literally they're trying to do a uh, a DCU movie, but just one aimed at a little bit younger audience or more of a family audience. I'm not going to say necessarily younger, just family. I think they have like two different branches. There's the main one. They advertise like guys our age and they have the family one because there was a just league movie that came out that was like G rated or something. No, that, that one was really good back. too. I, 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 mm-hmm. is, that was once I bought it a little bit late. So then I kind of forgot about it for talking on the show, but, uh, that one was another one. They did kind of like it was like sort of like a modern Super Friends, but if Super Friends was done good, not kind of obnoxious. 
They don't, they don't. I really want it to be a part, like, just deleted scene, maybe, or just them, like, beating the shit out of Marvin. Yeah, I know. Just, like, maybe, like, you don't, they don't really say it. Just, like, you just see him on the fucking corner beating some, and then you see, like, a pair of, like, brown, like, lit pants sticking there, and then you see, like, a cape floating by. Red <laughs> hair. Like, that <laughs> covered his afro. face. <laughs> but, no, it's, Cyborg's like. Cyborg's like, you fucking stay there. Don't you fucking get up. Know your fucking place. <laughs> like, I, I want to say they use Cyborg to replace pretty much Marvin and fucking Wonder Dog and Wendy. You know, but it has like the, it has it has that Legion of Doom. That's like the like the battles. The only thing you might not like about it though, it's like they do. That I might not like. Okay. <laughs> they do go to the future, or Lex Luthor goes to the future. Or no, he's frozen and he ends up in the future, and then he starts fucking shit up. And you can probably guess what future this is. Legion shit. Yeah, it's got a couple Legion characters in it though. No, here's the thing. I don't. I, I don't hate the Legion. Just stay where the fuck you are. <laughs> in the future. <laughs> no, that's, you stay in the fucking future. No, this one's actually, like, the Legion part's not really bad. It doesn't, like, bring it down. Because there, there's always those books where, like, there's a Superman one I have. It's, um, it's called uh, Time and Time Again. And I was like, man, this story is just awesome. Superman's going through all kinds of this time travel and doing all kinds of this cool stuff. And then all of a sudden he gets to, like, Legion. And the story just kind of goes from being this, like, super awesome story and then it just tips down a bit where it's not like it's bad, but it just like that roller coaster ride just instantly stopped. And now you're kind of on a like a little tugboat going down the river. And it's just like, oh, well, it's more of like it's I guess it's because here's the thing. Um, it's set in the future. Most of the things I recognize and, and know of is of the DC universe aren't in the future. And on top of that, there are all these characters. Yeah, I don't really know. And. I, I guess they kind of go into, I mean, I, I like science fiction. I like space opera stuff, but when they go, they, whenever every single time Legion pops into another character's book, they're always bringing in like, well, ever since the great battle of like Paraplax back in the Galacticon universe, we had to stop in this, you know, alternate time from happening. It's always just so like convoluted. So all over the place. And like in Brainiac seven had to come in and save the day with bouncing boy or whatever the fuck. And yeah, they got, they got some that, weird fucking characters too. But here's the thing, though. You know, after Guardians of the Galaxy, that like D- the DC is kind of looking at Legion, like this could be our Guardians of the Galaxy kind of thing. Yeah, and you know, just like anything, and that could be good. Yeah, that could you be could good. probably just... make Legion cool. But you know what Legion is? It's like it goes back to like Teen Titans because they're always a bunch. They're a bunch of fucking kids who think they're all kind of hot stuff, and then they got all these kind of emotional problems on top of it, and then they're in the future. Mm-hmm. and it, i think it's just like a combo of things like i don't know what it is i'm not gonna say the legion's like the worst thing but it's it always has been sort of the like, it just brings like whenever like a legion appears to like shoehorn their way into a comic book series it just mostly brings it down but i will say in that justice league adventure one or whatever that movie was called they're they're not that bad and it's only like two of them mm-hmm. anyways it's just like two of them are like oh fuck lex luther's fucking everything up we got to go back and help is it like is it like Cosmic Boy and Fire and Lightning Lad or something no, like that? No, it's not like the main ones. It's like two like other ones that like like we kind of wish we were like Legion. Like, like Legion, those, like those Legion two, Nets or something. I don't know what the fuck you call like, them. Like Legion Nets. Uh, like Cosmic <laughs> Boy and like Yeah, not the main like Brainiac ones. Seven are probably like the two that I can tolerate the most. But I mean everybody else and like, you know, they even made their way into like like two of them or two or three of them made their way into new 52 superman they didn't slow it down none too much they're just there for a minute it's just when they kind of start bringing in all this stuff from their universe I and mean, i say they're like them as if they have a choice over it the writer starts bringing stuff in from their book into the other book it's kind of like i don't know who the fuck you people are you know even though i guess it's all probably in some way a spinoff from superman because superboy is part of the legion or his descendant or whatever the fuck i, I can't keep track of it well speaking of something that makes a lot more sense to you know regular folks in good old 90s times, did you happen to pick up that, um, they had that comic come out, it was called X-Men 92, and it's like, they're going back and doing like the 92 like TV series style of X-Men again in comics, like a continuation. They're like continuing the uh, old TV show? I'm not too sure if they're continuing either the old TV show or the comics that were spun off of the TV show. That always seems so weird to me when there's this like, all right, you know that, uh, you know that that this comic book 
we spun off a cartoon of that. And now we're spinning off a comic book of the cartoon, of which is based off already a comic book. That always seemed kind of like weird to me because I, you know, because they had yeah. like the here's the Justice League Unlimited comic. Like, yeah, I, I could just watch Justice League Unlimited before that and go read Justice League. But Justice you, you League. Know. <laughs> yeah. But, well, um, I, mean, I picked I guess... up that first first issue. It came out yesterday, mm-hmm. Tuesday, I want to say. Um, and because uh, I was looking forward to it, because I, I heard him announce it like last year. I'm like, well, that's fucking. There we go. That's my, the X Men I know and love the most. So like. The book starts off. It is like '90s as fuck. They are at a, at a mall. Awesome. awesome. They are at a, an. Are they're at a laser tag? Awesome <laughs> section. They have rented it out for the day because the danger room is being repaired by beasts. This is how the comic book starts off. It just feels like it's '90s as fuck. You know, Jubilee is like talking about arcades and whatnot. Like everything. It's almost like. Almost shoehorning in the '90s like a little too much. It's someone wearing like a Soundgarden T-shirt, and it, it's close enough to be in that. I'm surprised there wasn't. There's somebody. like a there's like a billboard for like Beck behind him somewhere. But it starts off there, and then all of a sudden, a fucking Sentinel like busts in, like through the laser. <laughs> what, what, what else would you know? Yeah, what else would just like fucking bust? And then it's that thing that apparently this is why I think it comes from the comic books because some of the stuff I don't remember in like the, the TV show was that there's like Senator Kelly's like fucking emperor Kelly or something like that. And he's like flying around this like hover pod thing. And he explains to them that later after they defeat the Sentinels, they're like, Oh yeah, there's just some of those rogue Sentinels just running around, you know, the world. Like we can't do anything about it, stopping them. It's just like, <laughs> the, <laughs> let those Sentinels be Sentinels, I guess. <laughs> just these giant walking things like with their own mindset going around just like, ignore it only goes after mutants not real people <laughs> you know like me yeah. well like every like me like everybody else everybody else in the world has a floating like chub a chair right <laughs> yeah. but um so it, it goes through that and then that's almost about it like really because it's well sometimes when you read like one issue you, when you try to explain it to somebody it's you realize how like simple and quick one issue is like fucking fight it's like what were they yeah. doing well they were playing laser tag because the danger was broken <laughs> sentinels broke in that enticed some action you know uh they end up killing the sentinels and senator kelly came by and said that those sentinels were kind of rogue and that maybe you guys should do something about it tune in next week folks well, I, I could only imagine. I'm just, I'm just gonna take a shot in the dark here. Wolverine was not playing laser tag with them. He probably had his arms. Nope, crossed. he was playing laser tag with them. Really? I saw. I could just see him having his arms crossed, and then like seeing like waiting down the hall, like some shady figure who's gonna play a part later. Peeps are like that's something to smell right about that guy. He follows him in. Next thing, that's in the sit and he'll bust through or something like that. No, well, he gets kind of pissed at some point because, like, Jubilee ends up winning, of course, because she plays so many video <laughs> games. He just fucking knifes her. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's happy that Jubilee uh, wins. Probably he's like, happy because oh, he's like, as long as fucking Scott doesn't win. <laughs> <laughs> Cheating fucking bastard. He's just flat out like, I mean, how, how awesome would it be if Scott lost at laser tag of all people? He did lose it. I, mean, I know he's not using his eyes, but yeah. Well, there, there is a scene before the Sentinels break through where Wolverine decides to leave and he's in the mall shopping and he's literally at a store where there's just a rack of his flannels, like the, like the yellow and black ones that he wears in the show. Just an entire <laughs> rack, like just to make it feel like you're watching a cartoon. <laughs> <laughs> like his one outfit he could go to one store and just pick from <laughs> the cartoons the other thing they wear the same outfit every day I and mean, i want to say that show when they weren't wearing i mean they had their main superhero attire but when they're in their regular clothes that could fluctuate and change right or they it, still, it could still change a bit, but they all kind of had their like standard like outfit like wolverine always had the flannel with um i don't think he had a jacket, you have a jacket? they have a jacket i want to see it a brown yeah jacket. he had a brown jacket i want to say uh, Scott always kind of had that like casual suit or whatever you want to call it. I'm not too sure. Gambit's attire would change a lot because sometimes he'd be wearing like fucking a speedo or something like that if he was at the beach or uh, he was French. <laughs> yeah, so he's got that kind of going on. Or he had basketball shorts on when he played basketball or something like that. He would still always be wearing like the weird he, like he would always black, have the mask like the face mask on the black like cowl thing even like like underneath his like basketball jersey or whatever 
Or Speedo, yeah. It's, yeah. it's so weird. Like, I don't know why he never took that off. As a kid, it almost makes you go, is he, like, like a cyborg or something? Like, mm-hmm. why is he always wearing that? And then there is also, like, I remember this isn't that, this is still 90s as fuck, but it's not actually that comic, but it, it kind of relates. Do you remember the 90s? Like, most, like, uh, shows kind of have the, hey, kids, go to fucking church episode. Like, there's the episode that Nightcrawler guest stars in. I mean, he's, he's in more than well, one episode. he's a religious character. But there's the episode where he, because they're up in like a German, uh, a German church way up in the mountains. And uh, it's, there's like one, there's one like priest there who's like, I don't like Nightcrawler. He's a, he's the devil or whatever. And he like, I don't remember if he calls the brotherhood or calls the government or what, but shit goes down. And pretty much the the whole time. Calls the Ku Klux Klan or something. (laughs) I know you got a little bit of a fly. It's a little bit of a long wait, but trust me, I got. Believe me, I think it'll be well worth it. This guy, you'll be burning crosses all night long because of this guy. We even got, we got him in stock. We got extras back here. (laughs) I, mean, yeah, I you know you guys you got a problem with the black man. Wait till you see the blue man. Oh, you guys are gonna have a fucking heyday, and there's only one of them, or maybe two of them. I don't fucking. Well, know. there is also the guys that. Oh, you took care of the ones in Las Vegas. Oh, okay. Well, I guess it's just the other. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hate their fucking drumming songs on pipes too. <laughs> <laughs> they just have this fucking board of like, okay, there's only one of the blue mans left. <laughs> He's the highest. All crossed out. <laughs> it's just all the blue man group, and then like Mystique and Nightcrawler are the only two. <laughs> Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> <laughs> they got Sonic the Hedgehog some time ago. <laughs> no, and then like, um, so they call. He, I don't know. Then like they set the church on fire. And the whole time, like Nightcrawler is trying to talk to like try to talk to Wolverine, saying, "Hey, man, God's good and shit. He ain't so bad. Come on, man. You know." And I want to say they were like, "It was shit. It was Jubilee and Gambit. No, one of it would have been Jubilee and Rogue. He was with Jubilee and Rogue. And then at the very end, like I want to say, like when the when the the church catches on fire, and so and like Nightcrawler goes like, "Dude, you set the church on fire." that's what's waiting for you. And they zoom in on the fire. He's like, no, <laughs> you know, and at the very <laughs> end, I want to say Wolverine does the thing to save the day. And then he like, just picks up a statue of Jesus and just starts breaking it over. <laughs> not curse not just, anything but the Jesus statue. What? <laughs> <laughs> just, gonna, he looks at him for a second. Then just starts breaking it more. I'm going to beat some Christ in the, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and then he uh and then from there we cut to later like others oh, because they're on vacation or something and he cuts to wolverine he's like praying in church he's like thank you god for you know providing me with smokes making sure i live this long and da, 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 you know ends on a little happy note like that because i remember like so many shows have like I mean, not that so many but a handful of 90 shows did have the hey kids let's have some, some christian values for a second like there is uh do you remember the one there was the batman one that's basically the whole don't do drugs and go to church episode. <laughs> don't do drugs and go to church. <laughs> yeah, <that's> like, <laughs> it sounds more like, kids, if you're going to go to church, don't get high. <laughs> yeah. Do it after church. Yeah, like a respectable adult would. <laughs> yeah, so that way you have something to confess when you go in on Wednesday. So uh, <laughs> they, I think they confess on Wednesday. I don't know. I wasn't Catholic. So um, That's like Ash Wednesday you're thinking of probably. The only reason I know about that is because Edward Burns had a movie called Ash Wednesday that literally taught me those things. And then you got to see fucking, uh, not Spider-Man, but... Um, almost Spider-Man? Uh, no, Donnie Darko guy. Um, yeah, almost Spider-Man. Um, yeah, almost Spider-Man fucking shoots somebody. Yeah. Jake Gyllenhaal. He, gets, he shoots somebody in it. I don't know. Not, it's not a bad movie, but not Edward Burns' best one. Maybe because I just... Ash Wednesday's kind of fucking weird. No, I get you. I will. I want to say my my parents. Whenever like when I was a kid, every once in a while, whenever like there was trouble and and like going on, we, we we all got along pretty well. Whenever there was like trouble or something, they were mad about something. Like, you know, maybe we will just start going to church. Like, no, no, <laughs> not using, that. using it like well, I don't. That's like a '90s parent thing to do is to use church as like almost like a we're punishment. Gonna <laughs> we're gonna start going to church, and like, but it was like not so much. Just it was a little bit out of spite, a little bit out of anger, but it was a little bit more of kind of like, no, maybe we need some boundaries. And then Sunday would roll around. I'm like, oh, fuck it. I'm too tired. <laughs> well, I think it's that thing. It's like, they're like, they're like, we can't just lock Ryan in his room. Why not? What? 
it last minute or less and we did it yeah it was the best weekend of his life that's all he wanted to do was be locked in his room that's where his toys and video games are put- well yeah well let's take him somewhere where they'll fucking really hate <laughs> Somewhere they don't really hate. Church. I just got this. Why? Well, there's no video games, no toys there. I don't know. I just, for whatever reason, when I was a little kid, I was like, uh, I'm probably going to hell. I just thought that when I was a kid. I don't know why. I just thought I was going to hell. So I had this fear, this really (laughs) irrational fear. And I believed in heaven and hell back then. And I believed that when I walked into the church at some point, like the priest went, I sense it. There's an evil one. Him! It just points at me or something like that. I just had that. I don't know why. I just had that irrational fear. Like, I smell some sin on that one. You know? Like it's, yeah, it's like it's going to get scary yeah. in there. What'd you do this morning? <laughs> Jerked off to Princess Leia and Return of the Jedi. He's going to hell! You know? <laughs> going to hell going to die. Exactly. So. <laughs> oh, one thing I want to say about that X-Men book. Because I don't think you can get this one as a physical copy i think it's digital only because the way that it reads is it's the only time the first time i've ever seen it at least like you'll you'll say like there'll be a shot of like a castle or something like that and then it'll have the text and then when you flip the page it will like fade in and have somebody stand in front of that castle now and then having their text and then it'll layer on top of that maybe again as you keep going down mm-hmm. or sometimes you have a shot where you're like okay you have wolverine saying something and then it fades in and then you got like gambit then you would have Jubilee, and then at the very end, it's like, oh, so that's what the whole page looks like. Oh. Like, it does it bit by bit, kind of. Like, it's totally made to be a digital comic. I kind of like that about, like, some of the digital comic apps, because I, well, the thing, I mean, it's, 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 <coughs> it's part of the media. It's hard to avoid, but you'll turn that page, and you'll kind of get a spoiler on the next page just because you just see in your peripheral vision right off the bat. So you already know it's, up, it's sort of coming. But um, the, I kind of like that about like digital comics. Is you flip it, it's just panel by panel. And then it, that, so the big reveal actually kind of gets you. Well, I, I will say this. I actually think that reading comics is technically actually better. I like it more. In the digital <laughs> form. Just because of that, like technically reading wise. But I do like having the, it's more like I like owning the physical book. But I will say reading, it's kind of like that. But this is actually different than that. It's not like it necessarily goes panel by panel. Mm-hmm. It's like it layers on top of each other. Like something that you could never oh, okay. you could never have this book as like a physical copy mm-hmm. because of the way it is. Because it will be like one shot here and we're still on like maybe one page. And then it starts putting things here and layering it on top. Oh, it's kind of weird. Oh, that's pretty cool. It's like a, kind of like a so puzzle it's different. piece like you, should, you should check it out just for that almost. That in itself is cool. I mean, probably somebody else already did that on some other book. I'm pretty sure this is not mm-hmm. like a new thing. It's just the first time I saw it. So if you combine something new like that with something old that I like, like X-Men, X-Men 92, and combine it together. I could see It's that. only two bucks, too. It's a $2 issue, so it's not bad. They had... because um, Well, that right there, I mean... I like uh, I like having a physical copy, but I think as far as reading the book, that's actually kind of better for it. But I just I myself, I guess I like to see trees die, I guess, because I like having a lot of like physical copies. Yeah, but there's some yeah, books it, where it, it, it's kind of like it's literally a trade off, though. I, I will say I like the digital copy almost just as much. I just I'm not willing to pay like when I when I get a digital one, it's like I don't want to pay the same price that I can get an actual item for mm-hmm. It's got to be like half off or something like that. Mm-hmm. Or something like this where it's just like, oh, okay, whatever. That's kind of cool. Uh, on another, is that all you want to say about uh, X-Men? Yeah. We're going to take a quick break right here. But now a word from our buddies at Paint It Black Podcast. Take a listen. I'm Pete. That's Brian. Yeah. There's Lou. We are Paint It Black Podcast. We are Paint It Black Comics. If you could describe the show, what would you describe it? Horribly offensive. Balls to the walls. <laughs> A good time. I don't know. All, all professional. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't be Bang, surprised zoom. if fucking Barney heard some some screaming from next door. Right? Hey, yo, Fred, I got like, kicked out of the house. Uh, can I stay with you guys for a little bit? No, Barney. <laughs> We're not friends like that. <laughs> <laughs> you better go stay with the zoo. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> dum dum, you should have said yes to your wife. <laughs> can you imagine what Disney World would have been like had he lived longer? Uh, no juice. That's <laughs> <laughs> the primary difference. Yeah. I feel like he funded the Nazis in some way. Like, I, don't, I can't prove it. The what? first fucking model of their helmet had ears on it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the basket's here. It's coming over the hill. What the fuck's going on? Dosan sounds like a Renaissance painter. He was a fifth ninja turtle. He wasn't riding the head. They didn't really bring him out too much. <laughs> I'd like to fight the foot. <laughs> 
that's probably why they had all those stupid ass toppings. Bubble like, gum. Fuck, who let those on to the pizza? I want to think, bug. <laughs> who, who put Legos on this shit? <laughs> Can I give you money for for sex? I would enjoy <laughs> making a transaction for a blowjob. Yeah. Uh, can I get a receipt with that pussy? Oh yeah, how, how do I follow this? Do you wash those briefs with starch? <laughs> Make that booty clap. Why don't you? <laughs> Let's hear uh, Randy Newman doing the song for Pompeii. <laughs> oh, he's on the spot. Whoa, did smoke? <laughs> Volcano <laughs> Woo, this is smoke This is I actually got something uh, Well, there's a lot of stuff that's gonna happen over the week But did you hear, I think it happened today or yesterday Did you hear who's directing Aquaman? George Miller? No, that would be cool too uh, James Wan <laughs> Oh, really? Well, the, the only reason I say that because I was listening to like, that Fat Man on Batman episode, and then he was talking about you, like, you know what would be cool is if George Miller was fucking directing off. Get the plastic away from the microphone. <laughs> oh, sorry. I'm joking. I thought it should be that guy. Like, oh. get the fucking away. Fucking it up. But no. Yeah. No, but like. Um, now. Go ahead. James, what, what, did, what movies did he do? Oh, he, he was uh, Saw. He was Fast and Furious 7. He did a bunch of like horror films. Oh, he did that's right. Sin he, he didn't do Sinister. He did uh, Insidious 1. Oh, okay. So he did a bunch of sweet stuff then. Yeah, I want to. I don't know if he did all. I know he did at least Saw one. I don't know if he did the other Saws. Did Saw. I think he did the second one too because I want to say. That, I almost want to say the first four of them are done by the same guy. So I want to say he did one and two maybe, and then it's like a bunch. Maybe of Maybe he like guys. just produced two, three, and four. And then he did like The Conjuring. He did actually. Have you ever seen Death Sentence? Mm. -mm. Okay, check out Death Sentence at some point because Death Sentence you you like this movie. It stars the bacon. Um. And what awesome. it is, and what it is is basically, uh, Death Wish was uh, based on a book, and mm -hmm. I guess it, it happens a little differently in the movie than it does in the book. And they so it, they have this unused script that was basically based off Death Wish. What was the, the sequel to Death Wish in the book? And uh, you know, I guess the, they wanted to have Death Wish as an ongoing series, so they changed it and mm -hmm. did something entirely different. And uh, what they did is. They took that script, they put it in a modern day, stars Kevin Bacon. So in a sense, it's kind of a Death Wish movie without being a Death Wish movie. He doesn't look like Charles Bronson. But he, he doesn't have that whole past of like being a badass or anything. He still has his family. Basically, this guy's family gets killed in a, um, in a gang initiation. And mm -hmm. uh, it's just this very, and it's this very brutal, violent it's, it's kind of like it's more of a drama than it is an action movie but when the action happens it is fucking awesome a lot of people didn't like That's the movie it only has like a 20 huh. something percent on like rotten tomatoes but the movie is fucking awesome check it out it's like uh john goodman's in it he plays like an arms dealer uh he, he it's not a huge part but small part like i aisha taylor who does the voice of um what what's uh, what's that archer archer she like she plays a cop does a great job in the movie it's a really good movie check it out huh that's so well to me that sounds like a kind of movie that i'd like because i already like death wish a lot so you do that and it's kind of cool because that's it's almost sort of like how you know you get that movie payback with mel gibson in it mm -hmm. well that's really sort of like there's uh it's based on a book from like the 50s or 60s and then they also have point break with lee marvin which is kind of like the original movie of that and then you even had you know not nearly as good as the other two there was a well, really not that good at all, but there was the Parker one, but it was still that same character. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like that, yeah. yeah. And um, the way this movie ends, you cannot do. I guess is why they kind of Death Wish went off and became its own thing. But um, definitely check it out. It's actually it's it's pretty. And now is this a recent movie? Like it's last, not that like, recent. It's like two thousand seven, two thousand six, somewhere oh, around okay. there. So it's a little bit back, but, but it's it's still pretty. It's new. pretty awesome. It's pretty brutal in parts. It's a it's like like I said, it's a little bit more of a drama than an action scene than an action movie. But when the action scenes happen, they're fucking awesome. That's badass. Now, really quickly, and like whenever he whenever oh. he kills somebody, it's so damn rewarding. You just you just get that great feel. That that's what makes a good revenge flick is when you get that good, rewarding feel of like, dude, take that fucking justice, Punisher style. Well, the thing the thing about Death Wish because I do like Death Wish. I own Death Wish. But they get away with it in but, that movie. Because you think that maybe years later they should have done like well, that's a Death Wish Six 
where he finally cat because by this point Jeff Goldblum's famous, so by this time he had time to create this whole criminal empire. Because but that was back when he was just <laughs> that's some like thug. Charles Bronson should have just came out like in fucking Jurassic Park and like he's like you get him fucking T Rex, you go out there and get him. I know he's been hiding out here some chaos theory like guy. Chuck, <laughs> like Chuck Bronson just comes riding in on a T Rex like. You thought you'd get away, you son of a bitch. He's like firing, like chasing him down. <laughs> I turned my life around. I became a mathematician. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> You're going to die today, you motherfucker. <laughs> Chucky Bronson riding on a T-Rex after Jeff Goldblum. Who doesn't want to see that movie? At some point, Jeff Goldblum gets out of bazooka, and it's just like a badass brawl right in the jungle. That would be, oh, my God. When he runs out of ammo with the bazooka, he just pulls out a knife. It, virtually re- it reaches the point where it's just like putting their dukes out. You know what I mean? <laughs> <Just> <laughs> like other dinosaurs. And dinosaurs are spectating di- now. <laughs> yeah, they all crowd around. And they're just like, like the raptors are just doing that, ooh, ooh, like chanting It's just <laughs> subtitled and one raptor just says, can you believe it? Fucking Charles Bronson and Jeff Goldblum are fighting <laughs> in our neighborhood? Yeah. <laughs> and like, I, by the way, like Charles Bronson, because the whole, the whole rest of the movie just goes off the rail. We don't see what happens to Sam Neill. We don't see what happens to the kids, John Hammond. It just focuses on Charles Bronson, who if you didn't see the previous Death Wish movies, you don't know what the fuck is going on. <laughs> You're very lost at this like secondary part of Jurassic Park. <laughs> and then like, it ends with like fucking Charles Bronson lifting up like Jeff Goldblum's head and screaming, Aah! all the other dinosaurs like backing away as he's walking through. <laughs> <laughs> oh that'd be awesome <laughs> yeah still, i gotta so, see that death what's it called death warrant death uh death sentence death sentence death that something. doesn't happen but i'm, I'm so no, not, not, not that far but <laughs> they're pretty sweet well no, did you, did you, like, now but, i know but, this like, isn't your type or what are you gonna say i was gonna say real quick i mean i, I like death wish and all it's a good movie but um it's oh, actually, yeah, the ending that's what we we're talking about <laughs> Well, the thing about Death Wish, it was like, it, it's not the first revenge story or the first revenge movie, but I, as far as like, I think that type of gritty, urban, like, 70s. vengeance kind of thing, it was one of the first to do that. So now when you kind of watch other movies, when you watch other movies... That sort of did it better? Because they had time to elaborate on it. Because I was, I'm not, it probably wasn't the first, but it was probably one of the first big ones to get noticed. So mm-hmm. I think, you know, there are other movies by this point, like, I think there are other movies by this point that like have done it better than that since then, but it's still, it's a great movie. Well, you, you, know, you know, what's really kind of like Death Wish is Punisher. I was going to say that. Sort of That's like, kind of like, yeah, he's basically like proto Frank Castle. Yeah. You know, so well, there's just it's like that. That's what I respect the movie Death Wish a lot, just for the fact of like that's where that revenge kind of movie started. It once again, yeah, there's probably somebody who did it first, but that's the that's like the one that made it big. Like we can say mm-hmm. that. So like for all the movies that came after it, it's almost like you always got to look at that one going. That's kind of where it started. But the only thing that's kind of weird though is like, yeah, he never gets Jeff Goldblum and his like. Goons. He has like what's his what's his like what's Jeff Goldblum's famous line movie? I hate rich cunts, and then he like butts like his wife in the side of the head with a gun or something. And yeah, they, which I always went. I'm like, that's what killed her. Yeah, because she just falls over, just so you know. But whatever. I mean, it's still it just hard. doesn't feel like enough. Like I know it's it's like I know it's supposed to be kind of more realistic in real life that could just kill somebody easily. Mm-hmm. I guess in a movie you can expect it's like he's not just going to beat her fucking his skull in or something like that, and like, like so that we know in the our movie audience that she's like dead. 80s Roger Corman like soul smashing kind of shit. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Well, speaking of other kinds of smashing, I know this isn't your type of movie, but did you see San Andreas? Um, no, I didn't. I'm not really big on... Here's the thing about that movie. I'm not totally opposed to seeing it. I'm just not really big on disaster movies. That one looked kind of like... I, I'll, I'll say it. The one say... Usually I'm one of those people like, you don't need a big star to sell a movie. I'll be honest. The one thing about that movie is like, maybe The Rock. Because... I, I'll tell you this, though. I kid you not. I think that's almost like the perfect disaster movie. It's got it, they hit everything right in it. There's nothing fucking wrong. Really? I kid you not. It is all good. I okay. You got the rock in it, so that's just already badass. And then you got um uh what's her name? Gina. She's in um I always think of her from Son in Law, but she's also in Watchmen. Sin she's City. in um uh, Sin City. Um I'm trying to find her last name, but she, Yeah, but she's in there. Um 
fucking you get Roy Harper in the very beginning of the movie, but that's the only part he's in from Arrow. Um, and then, um, oh, and then um, what's his name uh, from Sideways? It's uh, Paul late. Giamatti. I'm Paul Giamatti. Yeah, Paul Giamatti. But um, no, I kid you not. It has kind of the stereotypical like story where it's just like sort of broken family, like The Rock. <clears throat> you know, they they're, they're getting like a divorce. You know, and the you know the mom's going with some rich guy and whatnot. But that stuff d- does not really affect it. it. That's it has that kind of the stereotypical let's get back together thing, and they do. <laughs> they just do. They just never. It's a stereotype. Well, they, 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 but they never focus heavily on like the drama parts of it. There's a couple like little parts there, but you know, like where some disaster movies that kind of like brings it down, mm-hmm. or like there's always like b- dumb characters in it. Like I always say, look at War of the Worlds. War of the Worlds is a perfect example of a movie that should just be fucking pure amazing. But there's two fucking entities that bring that movie down. <laughs> you don't even say people like entities like subhuman like these. Things. They are subhuman. It's just it's work Tom their way into it. Kids. Uh, Dakota Fanning really and it's like Dakota Fanning and White Goku. Yeah, it's like I think about it. if you, like if I say look at everything in that movie except for those two kids, I think that movie's fucking awesome. Those two kids though, they bring the movie from like something like it could be almost a four out of four movie to being a two out of four movie in my opinion. It's like it brings it down a lot. Well, when you think, I mean, I'm not trying to like you know overly suck his dick here because I'm a fan of his work, but I mean Spielberg. When you hear Spielberg, War of the Worlds, that makes perfect sense, and that should immediately be kind of like in my opinion, something to like a Jurassic Park level or like Jaws Mm -hmm. level because it's kind of like that big blockbuster horror film that like a kid could probably tolerate but could still probably creep you out a bit. And yeah, it was just in that I did like the movie wasn't trying to be all like flash, like a flashy action adventure movie. It was trying to be like a horror film, which is cool because most science Mm -hmm. fiction usually just goes for big flashy action. But it was sad because, yeah, it was just kind of like... There were things about it that were really cool, but then the kids... Well, it's like the special effects are really cool. I think like just like the story and like how everything plays out is really cool. But if it's just those two fucking kids. Where in San Andreas, all the characters are good. The Rock's fucking awesome. The mom's awesome. The daughter is a really cool character. Like she's really strong. She's not like a pushover or anything. And then they got these two like British chaps in there who kind of like <clears throat> stumble along with her. The- and they're all good, too. And then you get – the best part, too, is you got the fucking douchey, like, rich guy that, like, the mom's going for at Dies first. in the beginning. And, you know, The Rock's being – well, no, you know, well, the, the Rock's being all cool with him at first. He's, I know he's being, like, the, the, the better man and whatnot. But then the second that, like, she's like, well, um, I'm moving in with, you know, Bill over here and whatnot. And then he just kind of has this look on his face because it's just The Rock. <laughs> this just, is, like, the one-arched like, eyebrow thing. <laughs> Please tell me does the one-arched eyebrow well, thing. You almost pi- – no, he does it. You almost picture, though – you know, like, this is one of the best scenes in True Lies is when he's driving the car and the guy's talking about his wife. He's like, oh, he's got, like, an ass like a baby or whatever. <laughs> or ass like a 10-year-old boy. And then it just shows Arnold. And he just t- smacks him in the <laughs> fucking, like, face. And then it cuts back and he doesn't actually yeah. do that. I just almost picture on this movie. It shows that guy just like, oh, we're moving in with each other. The Rock just grabs him and just smashes his head over the counter. <laughs> and then it just cuts back. He's standing there still. <laughs> No, he, he literally goes outside. He kind of takes it out on the bike. He, like, pulls his bike out. He's like, here's the daughter's bike. He doesn't, like, chuck it, but he, like, sets it down all angrily and whatnot. <laughs> there's there's even a part, though, like, in the very beginning, because he's, like, he's, a uh, The Rock's, like, a firefighter, but he's, like, search and rescue. He's flying a helicopter and whatnot. You see that in the trailer. There's a part where this chick, like, drives off the edge, or a boulder comes at her, and she goes off the edge of a cliff, and they're having to save her. And this is the only part that they got fucking Roy Harper in. He's there helping, too. Gets his fucking arm stuck underneath the car. But there's a part, like, at the very end, they're like, oh, fuck, we gotta go down there and save Roy. We gotta get <laughs> her out here, or else we're not gonna make you it. He's gonna robot arm. <laughs> the Rock literally goes down there to get the girl out, and he fucking rips the entire car door off, like, in one fell. <laughs> That's awesome. So they still got, they still got, like, Rock-like moments in there. But the good thing about this movie... The action's constant. It's like copious. The movie doesn't slow down enough. There's always something cool going on. The special effects look awesome. I mean, you get to see Los Angeles get destroyed. You get to see San Francisco get destroyed. You get to see the Hoover Dam get destroyed. It's fucking badass. Um, I noticed that now. And then it's just like. Oh, you continue on. Well, I noticed for a while, like all disaster movies would focus on the East Coast. Now, like we're giving it a break. We're focusing on the West Coast now. 
Well, I know a lot of movies now are starting to be shot in San Francisco. Too, there was a time yeah. period where I, I used to go like, dude, mm-hmm. they haven't shot a movie in San Francisco other than maybe a couple here and there that are kind of underrated in like years. Because like I always just think of a lot of Clint Eastwood movies take place in San Francisco, but you know that like what thirty years ago of like Dirty Harry and yeah, all those kind of movies. Of- so now it's like we got Terminator 5, you got Planet of the Apes, you got uh, San Andreas. A lot of movies are coming back to San Francisco, whether or not that's actual San Francisco and not digital San Francisco. Yeah, and then also, like, I mean, this is a CG movie, but still, um, whatchamacallit, that new Pixar movie coming out, Inside Out, takes place in San Francisco. Ant-Man oh, well, it there takes you go. place in, in San Francisco. Uh, there's another one coming out that's in San Francisco that I'm drawing a blank on right now. But yeah, there, there's a bunch of movies taking place in San Francisco also. I don't know why I missed B.H. Trend. So uh, chances are, if the Sonic the so Hedgehog it, movie it, ever gets filmed, a scene of that might be in San Francisco. Be because in San at Francisco. one point in time, Sonic Team was here, and there are some level. It, it's going to be like a live-action CG fusion. So chances are, at some point, they're going to have like the Station Square level or something like that. Well, Sega of America is in San Francisco, so... Well, they got canceled or shut down a little bit ago, apparently. Really? Yeah. That humongous building did? I believe so. I heard that. Oh, wow. I, I, didn't, I didn't hear about that. Or at least that, but... Son- the Sonic team down the here got like, fo- got, like, Sonic team's no longer here anymore in San Francisco. They all got fired or laid off or canceled or whatever. Huh. Sega was just being a dick and just did a massive layoffs because like we're doing. We're that's a, 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 that's happened to like a bunch of companies like Konami and Capcom and Sega. I, I don't know oh, what's going. Sega, I think we're gonna focus on mobile gaming. Yeah. It's like nobody fucking cares. Which we might sound like, but uh, maybe they, that they'll be the same. Thing. If that is this thing to save the uh, save their companies, we're gonna sound like a bunch of dinosaurs. Like, can you believe this mobile gaming? Huh. But I mean, I'm sure they'll make some yeah, money. Know, but... I'm sure they'll make some money off of it. But it just sounds so kind of like dickholish to me. I don't know. Oh, yeah, I, I'm sure, yeah, they'll make money. Whoa. Giant armor spider just fell off the side of the wall. Oh. But Don't let it bite you. Poor guy's like, fuck! One second. Once you just like you hear you run off camera, like, fucking do it! Kill it! Laura! Laura! Jar! Jar! You know? <laughs> no, I wouldn't kill it, but, like, just, you just gotta picture you, like, just picture yourself climbing along this wall, like, I mean, to a spider, that's like a hundred fucking stories up. And then all of a sudden, you just do one misstep, you're like, no! I mean, like, we see it, it's just like, you it goes down in, like, seconds, but to him, he'd be, like, falling, like, whoa! Well, like, that Ant-Man trailer, like, I'll be honest, Ant-Man's not jumping out at me. Ever since Edgar Wright left it, I mean, I still, I'll still see it, but, I mean, ever since he left, it's not been jumping out at me as much. One of the saving graces of that trailer, though, have you seen the trailer for it? Yeah, I've seen it a couple times. There's the whole part of having this big, epic battle, like, on, like, a child's, like, train set like, you know, toy train set or whatever. He, one of them picks up, like, a fucking, like, train, chucks it at the other one, and it just cuts away. It just looks like a train, like, just falling over. Like, mm-hmm. it's, like, not a big deal. Yeah, well, I, it's, like, the little bit of, like, Marvel comedy, but I think it, it works. You know, it's not bad. Well, that works. For that, I think that works. Yeah, I, mean, I think we're going to see a lot of that. I think for that movie, we're going to see a lot of that Marvel comedy for, like, Ant-Man. But, I mean, I'm kind of expecting it going in. I think, it, it, I'll be honest... I was saying, I kind of it, expect it, does, it when I see a Marvel movie that's my Marvel company. I mean, not all of them are like that, but, you know, mm-hmm. the comedy's bound to be Yeah. Like. I mean, I, I'll, I'll say in a first, with um, aside for a few lines in it, it all kind of looks like a standard kind of, I'm not trying to be a dick here because I want it to be good, but um, it looks kind of like your standard, like early 2000s, like superhero movie. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think what's going to make it different, and what's, we're only seeing the trailer, is just all the ways that they use the small to large ratio. You know, that's mm-hmm. going to be what makes it different from like you know what superhero movies you've seen before. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I mean, I'm hoping it's going to be good. I don't want it to be bad. I'm not one of those people like here's where Marvel finally fucks up. <laughs> I don't want to be one of those guys, but I do want it to be good. But I just, it, it's just not really jumping out okay, at me yeah. beyond like, yeah, beyond one or two parts, and maybe because I just. Once, because that was one of those movies I was looking the most forward to because it was the next Edgar Wright movie. Mm-hmm. But now that he's off it, I mean, I, I, I'm sure the other guy will probably do a decent job, but we'll see what happens when the movie comes out. Well, till then, you should go and see San Andreas on the big screen because that's, that's the one thing about disaster movies, though, is like they're not ne- they're never nearly as good like once you see them at home. Like mm-hmm. seeing that on the big screen. But I kid you not, though. I mean, it's it's still a disaster movie, but it's like the perfect disaster movie. I think it's the best disaster movie I've seen since Dante's Peak. And that Dante's Peak is like the one I hold at the top of my favorite disaster films. Mm. 
Dante's Peak is one I liked. I guess I just don't like the ones that like. It's been years since I've seen Dante's Peak. I just I really don't like. Um, uh, uh, I know there's worse movies. But my most my most hated movies is Day After Tomorrow. See, it, do, it doesn't roughly... really have any of those problems because you know, like if, if I had to point out the problems in Day After Tomorrow, a lot of times it is. It's like, well, there's some annoying characters in it, and there's not enough action in it, and it's got some, you know, this and that. This movie is just like tons of action. You know, the drama is just subtle enough. You know, just what you need. Like that douchey guy. Like he fucking. There's a part where like his the daughter's like in San Francisco. And she's at, like, his, like, douchey new high-rise building he's building or whatever, <laughs> his office. And, um, you know, the, the place starts shaking. Corp. So they so they run down to the, you know, the their fucking Lincoln and start driving away. And then all of a sudden, like, the ground collapses. And I feel so bad for the, the driver because nobody fucking cares about it. Like, the ground collapses, they fall in or whatnot. Or maybe they turn around. But this huge, like, rock, or, like, the top part comes down right on top of the driver, just, like, smashes him. And then, like, the... <sighs> The daughter's like stuck. Her legs are caught underneath there, and the and the guy's like trying to get her out, like the douchey stepfather. And then at first he's like, "Fuck, I'm gonna go get help." And it's like, oh, "Okay, well, makes sense. I mean, you're not gonna be able to lift it up by yourself or whatever." And then he runs up there, and then he's asking for people help, and nobody's kind of really doing anything about it. And he's just like, "Well, fuck it," and he just starts running like away. And then that's when like the British kids that come in, they help save her, and then they become like the other heroes of that section. And they get her out. And they do it in, like, a really ingenious way, too. Like, the guy thinks about it. He gets, like, the jack out of the car to lift up the rock because they can't pick it up themselves. And then he goes, oh, fuck, it's up all the way. It can't do it. So mm-hmm. then he stabs the tires. And the tires go down, giving that extra lift. I'm like, that was pretty cool. That was smart. Mm-hmm. But then there's a part, two. This is, like, I think it's when the tsunami kind of comes. Or you see that or it's, like, a ginormous dust storm. I can't remember. I'm drawing a blank. Even though I saw the movie, like, a week ago. I'm starting to forget things. The douchey guy, he's out there. And he's like, oh, fuck. And he starts turning around running. And then there's, like, a guy hiding in the corner. He's got, like, this perfect corner. The douchey father, he literally takes this guy. just starts pulling on him and throws him out into, like, the tsunami of the dust or whatever <laughs> was going on. It fucking takes the corner. So you're just like, oh, that fucking douche. And then he finally gets his comeuppance. And he survives. Like, Go ahead. Right, you off. He finally gets killed, like, when it takes out the uh, Golden Gate Bridge. He just gets taken out by it. Maybe that's when the tsunami comes because then it takes out the Golden Gate Bridge. Well, whatever. There's tons of sweet action. As I said, you get to watch not only the Hoover Dam get destroyed, which is a really cool scene. You get to see Los Angeles, and you get to see San Francisco, and then some other little places along the way. You see some like small little like valley towns, just gonna sh- where there's not a whole bunch of structures around, just like a little shake. Sh- oh, what the fuck was that? I don't know. There's a crack in the wall. That's kind of bad. <laughs> yeah. Some Central Valley. Town. There's like a there's a part where like uh. Because, like, the, the Rock and, like, his wife are pretty much trying to save their daughter. That's, like, the whole point of the movie. And at first it starts off that, like, the Rock's in his helicopter and he goes to pick up his wife and whatnot. Or his ex-wife by this point, I guess. But then, they, you know, they get back together. And then they, they almost just keep switching vehicles. Because then they're, like, they're in a helicopter. And then the helicopter goes down somewhere. So they take a car. And then they're driving this truck. And then the car, they end up trading with this old person for an airplane. So then they're flying this airplane. And then they parachute in the giant stadium. And then they got a fucking boat and they're driving around in it. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost like a Grand Theft Auto movie, if that was the case. I can kind of see that. I mean, sp- well, speaking of kind of rock, I'm, I'm assuming it would have to be in, like, uh, it would have to be bad. The Rock's apparently going to play um, the uh, Kurt Russell character in the, um, in the uh, whatchamacallit, the uh, um, Big Trouble in Little China remake. Escape from, or, yeah, I heard about that. I'm like... That's perfect. You know, The Rock, to me, he, he can play pretty much, if they're going to remake any old action movie, he's just the ideal mm-hmm. go-to candidate for me. I just think he, he's just the perfect one. You know what I mean? If he was going to, he could play even like Arnold Schwarzenegger roles, and I'd be like, yeah, that would make sense if they were going to, if they had to do a remake of something or another, and if The Rock played it, I'd be like, okay, that that's my most well, believable candidate. he is kind of like one of the uh, only, uh, as far as I can tell, he is one of the real only kind of like Arnoldish actors we have right now. Um, I'm trying to. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, we have action yeah. stars, but I mean, we all really have. We have guys that are like close, Jason like Statham. you know. But I almost feel like, well, those guys. I feel like they're more like in like the Mel Gibson, Bruce Willis, mm-hmm. like they're. You know what I mean? Like okay. that makes sense. Like because if there's if there's almost like two types of action stars, you got like your huge bodybuilder types like Arnold Schwarzenegger and even Stallone, even though he's a smaller guy, but he's got kind of that bodybuilder frame. Um, and then you got sort of like, 
they, they almost like your action stars, but they almost feel like everyday people. Like Bruce Willis is like the everyman mm-hmm. sort of. He just happens Kurt to Russell. kick a lot of ass. And I almost feel Mel Gibson sort of in that same thing and Kurt Russell. You know what I mean? They're not, you know, they're athletic, but they're not like huge. They're not like, you know, over the top, like muscular and whatnot. They're, they got regular frames. I mean, you could say Stallone's in that state. He's like, he's like the guy who goes from both. He can be sort of that every man. And he can also be the guy who's like the next step up. Too. He's kind of like the guy who, uh, He's like, he, cause he could, yeah, you're right. Cause he could be kind of like the, the big war commando or he could just be the really buff, the really buff guy that kind of works at like the mechanic, it, the, this is mechanic could also probably kick some ass if he had to. Yeah. Well, I was thinking almost, you could say Rocky sort of like the, the every man mm-hmm. and then Rambo's like the super action guy that like, fuck, you'd have to be that certain person with that type of training and all that. Like, he's just like, Oh, you know, that extremist. We, we even look at him in Rambo one, like he, he's still, he's still like built. He's still obviously in great shape, but then you see him in fucking Rambo four. He is like kind of rivaling Arnold with how fucking huge he is. Maybe it's just the way how, how it's shot, but in Rambo four, he was just a fucking like tank. Yeah. He, and then even Rambo three, I think that's even where it goes even farther. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's just, he's just massive and same with Rocky four. Cause like the same time period, or I guess he's more ripped than that one. Let's say that I think he might be bigger in two, but mm-hmm. So he's sort of the guy like that, but that's how I think of a lot of these guys. Even Vin Diesel, like I think of him being close, but he's almost he's almost like he's like a Stallone, where he's sort of like the in between. He's bridging the gap, but yeah, we really don't have a whole lot of guys that are at that rock level. And you know, there's guys that have potential. Like I think Dave Bautista, he's almost there, Jason but Momoa. he just hasn't got enough. Yeah, him too. They just haven't got enough like starring roles where you're like, okay. Let's have that where The Rock, you know, The Rock can sell the biggest movie known to mankind, mm-hmm. pretty much. Rock's at the point where he could be in yeah, almost t- anything and he could probably sell a pl- uh, picture. Yeah, because that's, I mean, he has like that Arnold Stallone level of fame, I think, mm-hmm. of nowadays, where he just is this guy. Like, literally, you could slap The Rock on almost any movie and it's kind of like, I'd be there just to see The Rock. I've, I pretty much see just about any movie he's in because it's like, I like The Rock that much. Maybe not The Tooth Fairy. He is kind of my, maybe, like... I would, maybe would check out The tooth, tooth Fairy. Beyond that, though. Well, that was sort of the period where I remember, like... Because there was a period where The Rock was doing a bunch of kind of family movies, and you're like, and you're kind of like, dude, are you ever going to do a fucking action movie again? You know, it's like, where's, like, The Rundown or, like, Walking Tall or even, like, Scorpion King or something like that? And there was this period where he just wasn't doing them. And I think, I think the comeback movie was faster. Mm-hmm. Because once he started doing faster, then he was in Fast and the Furious. Then he started putting him in other action movies, too. And he had his comeback, that, you know. He, I mean, he was in that Hercules movie. He was in... Uh, that's the ironic thing, because Faster, like, a lot of people didn't like Faster. Didn't get good reviews. But I think a lot of people actually kind of noticed that, oh, this guy can play, like, an intense, like, uh, anti-hero kind of character. Because even, like, Scorpion, because, like, Mummy 3, or Mummy 2, two he, <laughs> he was there at the beginning... And then there was a CG, really bad CG, rock attacking people at the end. Yeah. It was just kind of there for the very beginning of, of, of Mummy 2. And then even Mummy 3, it's like, this guy becomes a bad guy? He seems pretty cool. I mean, not Mummy 3. Scorpion, and, uh, King. Scorpion King, he seems, yeah, he seems really cool. Like, he's like, oh, this guy becomes a bad guy? I don't see how he becomes a bad guy. He's still very, he's still very chill. I mean, he's a badass, but he's, he, ain't, he, don't, <laughs> he, don't, he don't seem so bad. Yeah. And then, so... And I think Faster was the one where he, he played kind of where it showed he could play like a tragic anti-hero kind of character. And it's so weird to hear that like people are just so anti-Faster. When I just think of that movie as like, man, that movie is like such a good movie. And, and that's true. Cause I, now here's I would the, recommend that movie to people and then people would watch and be like, eh, it was OK. It's like, OK, I think like what the f- OK. I think a lot of people just don't get it because and I'm not trying to say that like you don't understand. I'm not trying to say that in like a demeaning kind of way but i mean faster the thing about that movie is it's a modern day western i don't think a lot of people catch that mm-hmm. and even just the way the action goes the thing about mo i mean way a lot of <clears throat> i'm just going over a cold sorry about that the way a lot of <laughs> act like 70s action movies go is there's this big build up to the action and when it happens it happens really quick but it's very brutal when it happens mm-hmm. and faster is very much trying to be that and I don't think everyone really caught that. I mean, there is some. I mean, there is one thing about Faster. I think at one point in the movie, they give too much information away that, that, that I was able to piece together. Like, all right, well, Billy Bob Thornton's going to be the bad guy. They're going to try and pull a fast one on me, but they just basically I could put enough together. 
Billy Bob Orton's the fad, uh, bad guy a little too early for me. But still, everything else in the movie was really enjoyable, and I and I really liked it. Yeah. So I even went out. I even went out and bought it right when it came out. So because we don't have very many modern westerns like that. No, and I just think that's yeah. It's it's modern western has the rock in it. Like got the authority. It has that whole '70s action movie. Yeah, vibe. it's got that. It's got a mix of like being like a western movie, but then that '70s gritty action movie, almost like like a Death Wish or something like that. It has that feel, and I to me maybe because I just like that genre so much. And once again, I think it comes down to that same thing of like sort of how you know how we love Clint Eastwood so much, but then you talk to everybody else in our mm-hmm. age range, and they may know who Clint Eastwood is, but they have. They do oh, not I saw have that. Dirty Harry once. Well, yeah. They might not even have seen Dirty Harry. They go, "Is that the guy that played Dirty Harold?" It's like uh, that was from Borat, but uh, I guess close. <laughs> <laughs> like, because that's the one thing is, I just I realized that like nobody had like people in our age range, especially people younger, they just don't have that unless they are really Clint Eastwood fans. They don't have that obsession of like Clint Eastwood as just being this such a badass fucking actor. Or those kind of, or those that time of movies, like the very, like the beginning of Faster is seriously, I think, one of the coolest openings for a character. He just gets out of prison. The guys will say, "Now, if you ever feel yourself, like you don't, you don't see this kind of character in movies very often. When they they do, they don't have, they don't like write them that well. Or you don't have an actor like I think The Rock is perfect for this kind of character because the priest is sitting there. So if you ever have any troubles, uh, just call this number. We'll be there to help. Uh, do you have any questions? Yeah, where's the door? Just real quick like that. <laughs> he walks out. He's in the middle of a desert. There's no car coming. To, there, he, the prison's in the middle of the desert. There's no car coming for him. He just walks out there. He looks at the card, flicks it. And as soon as he flicks the card in the wind, that da na 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 That kind of like 70s kind of uh-huh. like R&B rock song kind of kicks in. Then he, what's he do? He starts fucking jogging through the <laughs> desert. Just starts fucking jogging. He goes to where some fucking abandoned junkyard. The music picks down, slows down a second, rips the fucking sheet right off this car. The music gets right back up again, like just five seconds after it already stops. He opens the door. There's a fucking revolver and there's a leather jacket. Sure, he just got done running 15 miles through the burning sun. But just throws on the jacket anyway because he's the rock. He don't give a fuck. Yeah, exactly. Gets in the car, speeds off, drives out. Just like, I'm in. I'm fucking in. Go what wherever this movie it could be like he could just be him just going to the toy store and but regardless like I, he's got to do something something's gonna so, happen something cool's gonna happen uh, it just I just yeah. is and I'm just so surprised that yeah I hear so many people like and people that I think who like those seventies movies some of them just said like eh it was okay I'm like but I thought that would that was your genre man it's bad something here. The only person I've talked to that kind of I mean not it's not a movie that like everyone has seen but the only person I've talked to that totally kind of got that movie was like Wes, like two days. I remember like a week after I saw it, I bumped into Wes. He just puts us, he really, we're having like some drinks. He like finished, he took a shot of something. He's like, Dunnigan, you've seen faster, right? I'm like, yes. And he's like, there's only one correct answer. What did you think of that movie? I'm like, it was fucking awesome. Just, just, I'm buying your next fucking shot, man. You know? <laughs> and that's good because yeah, as I said, it's, it's weird. A lot of people just didn't care for that one, but you know, The Rock, I think, almost, if I had to say, like, out of a modern actor, he is the number one person I look forward to. I mean, technically, the number one person I look forward to now is Arnold Schwarzenegger coming out in a movie, but let's just say in, like, the sort of, like, the next generation of actors, he is the guy that pretty much can sell me almost any movie. You know, I, I'll be I got be a there. weird list. I got, like, I got The Rock, I got Arnold, um... Stallone usually. Yes, yeah, Stallone's um, always another one, too. But I'm thinking of more kind of, like, guy, like people, guys people in, like, I... the last 15 years. You know. Okay, I'm thinking of my reserves. I'm thinking of kind of like the ones that uh, are like, you know, Brad Pitt. The non-classic actors, I guess. You I guess you'd say, say Brad Pitt. Uh, he's be very much becoming a classic actor by this point. He's yeah, he's almost transitioning into that classic actor. Bra- Brad Pitt or actor field, but well, Brad Pitt's almost more of like Brad Pitt and George Clooney. They're almost kind of like Paul Newman and uh, like Paul Newman and uh, uh, like not Robert Martin Redford. St- uh, well. Oh, I guess you could say I, was, I, guess, I thought you're thinking Butch Cassidy a little bit. He could be he could be a little bit of Robert Redford because, you know, there's the, they have that whole dynamic in the Ocean's Eleven movies, even though it's a game, even though those are high, even though those are heist films instead of like Westerns. But I was going to say he has kind of like I think George Clooney has more of a, of a Paul Newman vibe and uh, Pitt has a little bit more of like a Steve McQueen vibe. 
where he could do yeah. like yeah steve mcqueen he could do those total like badass action movies but then he can do like a very tender like drama picture you know exactly and i think I uh like I, I, maybe i'm wrong here maybe i'm wrong i think brad pitt's career people are gonna say you don't know what the fuck you're talking about because i mean you know i'm not gonna lie i even though i the steve mcqueen movies i love i really love i've only you know seen good like the good handful of stuff that he's really well known for um well he doesn't I, I think have a ton co- of movies compared to a lot think, of the other guys i think brad pitt's career has gone on longer than steve mcqueen's by this point yeah well because that's what i mean that steve mcqueen has like sort of like a 15 year career i want to say in movies. he and died young maybe like he, he, he died in maybe about 10 something. like prime year you know prime movies kind of like those first years of movies are kind of all you know the smaller movies sort of like clint eastwood being like side characters and whatnot like you almost don't count those ones mm-hmm. you kind of count it once he gets the um you know a fistful of dollars mm-hmm. yeah exactly so i want to say you know steve it's like when i think steve mcqueen i primarily think you know like bullets uh like magnificent seven get away get away which is probably my favorite mcqueen film so um uh, even though escape. even though peck and paul looks down on well not not anymore he's dead but peck and paul looked down on get away he looks up at it now he looks literally snare drum joke at the expense of our betters no um what was i gonna say uh uh, he uh, he actually really looked down on the getaway, which I I, I love the getaway. But um, I think he looked down on a lot of his movies, though. I think he was, was always because he was always like way. fucking pissing on cameras and fucking prostitutes. Like oh, that's shit. And, this and is what they, I, he like it was. I don't remember what it was. There was a uh, which there was the Charlton Heston. It was a big war one. It was like he did. It was like the one he did right before the Wild Bunch, I think. And uh, mm-hmm. I don't remember. I haven't seen it, but I want to say it's like a it's like a western. It's like an Australian western kind of movie. It stars uh, Charlton Heston, and I, it was one of those moments. You hear these stories, like he went up to him, he's just like, you know what I think of your fucking performance, Heston, and just like uh, pulls his dick out, pisses right on the camera reel they were using all day, and then like fucking <laughs> Charlton Heston comes by and like fucking chuck because they're like it was like you know they're filming like a. A war film fucking chucks a spear at fucking like peck and paw misses him just barely it's one of those things from that moment we respected each other <laughs> you, know, you just don't get <laughs> like that those anymore. stories you don't hear anymore no. you don't hear those anymore you know oh. the last one i can think of is uh what's the director of Th- three kings again um uh fuck 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 david fuck. Uh, david, o. david o. russell like when he like on three kings ended up punching george clooney <laughs> Because he just was so angry at him the whole time and never wanted him in the movie in the first place. Like, that's, like, the last I can I can think of. Well, that, and I guess you could say, like, Christian Bale in Terminator 4, but... But that was one of those things, like, that's not one of those things, like, we fucking just, like, duked it out, and next thing you know, we're best friends. Yeah, well, it might be different if, like, Christian Bale just in the, in the fucking... Who, was it the director of photography? Light man. Light man. Just like, like, if they just maybe just like, like let's just let them be bo- let boys be boys <laughs> and just have them like fight it out. Then next thing you know, they might have yeah. been like sharing a beer together in a scene maybe. Who knows? Well, there's like footage of like David O. Russell. Like I never, I never seen the movie. Um, I Heart the Huckabees. Uh-huh. There's like footage of David O. Russell and like Parker Posey just fucking getting into it. And He's like, all right, let's try this again. Just playing Parker Posey. All right, we've been. This is only the thirty eighth take. Just give me a fucking minute. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to be mad. I'm just trying to tell you to do your job. I'm, no, you're just making it fucking harder. It just it changes every fucking day and it just like, escalates and it reaches this point where he says, "You know what? You're a fucking god." No, he's just pulling, just screaming and yelling at each other. At some point, like fucking, oh, like like uh what's it like the graduate um dustin hoffman's there he just like he just walks out fucking the boom people start like hook like un, un like hooking things up leaving at some point like fucking david o russell like chucks something across the room it hits a boom guy he's like oh and, like, he runs <laughs> off like scaring off camera and like your david o russell just kind of because the camera's fixed it's not moving around it's like fixed in the shot david o russell walks out you know, kind of walking off screen. Then comes to the other door on the other side of the set. And you know what? You're a fucking hack. I don't give a fuck what they say, you know. <laughs> yeah, so you can get like David Russell for like all his outbursts. He's just like, I don't know. I mean, it's one of those things. It's like, usually you kind of laugh at that kind of stuff. But right there, that like, I was laughing at the Christian Bale one. Just for, I mean, I felt bad for the guy in it. I don't know <laughs> how much the guy was at fault or how much Christian, because it's only audio. We, we. We don't see what the guy was doing. Yeah. We assume he's literally walking into the shot while they're filming 
I don't know if that's what he is doing or if like uh, Bale is just being overly sensitive, but it's all audio, so we can't know for sure. But this, we literally see it's a thick shot. So when you actually see it all, it's just kind of like, it's just one of those things. It is kind of unsettling, you know? It's like, <laughs> those are the actor people. They, they seem so nice in the movies. You know? <laughs> no, yeah, for sure. But, um, well, are you looking it up now? No, no, I'm not looking it up. I just wanted to check something really quickly. But I just want to make sure the Windows wasn't trying to fucking update itself again. But um, oh, it looks one good. more thing I actually got, actually, I bought recently. I bought that game Splatoon, the new Nintendo one. Oh, the 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 Jizz Squids. Yeah, the Jizz Squids, where you're just kind of going around, coming on people, and people are coming on you, and you're all having a good time. <laughs> Apparently it's really fun. That's what the rage says on Twitter. That, well, I just kind of because it was one of those kind of games. Like Nintendo is good at doing this. Like they can release a game, and I kind of look at it and go, "Yeah, that looks okay. I don't know, looks a little kind of kiddy, or maybe I just don't care." Pikmin did this one. I remember when that game kind of came out? You're like, "Yeah, do, do I, Why do I want?" You almost like ask yourself, "Why do I want this game?" You know what I mean? Not saying anything necessarily mm-hmm. against it, but like, what's the selling factor? You know, I this, I understand the selling factor on Mario and Zelda, but now you're trying to sell me this one about space and plant people, like. But then you play Pikmin, you're like, "Oh, this is fucking awesome! This is a really fun game." I mean, like, I don't know if I would have necessarily went out and just bought it, but you know, somebody else had it. I was playing. I was like, "This is great." Splatoon kind of had that thing too, and I just kind of had the money. I'm like, "Fuck it, I'm gonna get Captain Republican. I'll just support Nintendo. I'm just gonna get this game." I know it'll probably be badass. People say it's badass, and I know I have a feeling it'll be something kind of like a Pikmin, where you kind of. It doesn't jump out at you at first, but then you start playing it, and you're like, oh, this is pretty sweet. So, you know, I've only played it for a couple, maybe like two hours or something. I only got it a couple days ago. But you know what's the weird thing, though? This game, to me, it feels like a Sega game. It doesn't necessarily feel like a Nintendo game. It really feels like a Sega game. Now that you mention it, just kind of the looks of them, they do have this kind of a... I don't know, maybe kind of like Alex the Kid or Choo Choo Rocket kind of like art. Look yeah, it well, it so has much. that. It sort of has a feel, like it sort of plays almost kind of has a Sonic the Hedgehog feel to it, because you you'll you'll literally like spray these things and you'll launch up and you go to different areas. I mean, it has that kind of feel, and then just the paint part reminds you of Jet Grind Radio a lot, and then it also has this other. It just reminds you like games like Bonanza Brothers and all these other little things put together. It just almost reminds you of somebody who was a big Sega fan putting this game together. And I know it's full on Nintendo Nintendo, but it I don't know, maybe Nintendo hired some Sega guys and they had some input in it. I'm not too sure, but I can see that Sega just got done firing a lot of people, so possibly. It just it just has a real big feel it just reminds me of like a really like a really good Sega game, like something that we haven't really seen, you know, since like the Dreamcast era where they were releasing just nonstop good fantastic games. It mm-hmm. almost feels like a Dreamcast game, too. I don't know what it is about it. Like, it just feels like I could see this game being on a Dreamcast. You know, not the way it looks right now, but just that style, you know. Because the Dreamcast just had a lot, almost experimental games. Mm-hmm. And that's what this game is. It's a total experimental game. That kind of thing that, like, left field to the max. You don't really know what. But it, it's cool. It's fun. It's different. I mean, it's, it's pretty neat. As I said, I've only played it for a couple hours, so I can't really say, like, tons about it. But just in my like initial experience, I'm like, this is pretty sweet. I'm I'm glad I got it. When I get a Wii U someday, I'm probably gonna have to probably get that one. There's a few games that I already have a list that I, I know I want to get, but that I mean, I figure that it's one of those games like you said. You look at it, it doesn't look appealing, but you know, given who's behind it, it'll probably will be kind of fun because Nintendo is good at doing that thing where at a first glance you're just like, ah, fuck that. But then when you actually play, like, oh no, they actually knew what they were doing when making this. Well, yeah, I think of how many times I've, I've looked at Nintendo over the years and did that. You know, Wind Waker's the only one where I look at that and go, what the fuck is this shit? You know, and that's Zelda that I'm saying this to. And then you go to play it and then you go, oh, it's actually a re- really, really good game. Like, Nintendo's, yeah. good about ma- Nintendo's good about making a game that at first glance you look at and it almost pisses you off. <laughs> and they then, like, you gotta... go to play it and then you go, oh, well, this is fucking awesome. It's almost kind of like they're not so great at marketing, but when you actually sit down and check out the product, like, oh, wow, it's it's really good. And now I almost feel like I just got, like, so much faith in Nintendo, like, when it comes to, like, their Nintendo Nintendo games, that I could go out and buy something like Splatoon and just be like, oh, okay, it is sweet. Like, Nintendo just doesn't let me down. Well, over the course of the next two years, the only plan I'm coming out with, I think, four or five mobile games, 
And they're like, are you kidding me? People crank out mobile games within like two months. Why the fuck aren't you doing that? We're like, well, we're, we're Nintendo. We want to take our time. We want to make sure it's good. We don't want to just rehash Angry Birds over and over and over. We actually want to make a real game rather than just some little kind of like, like, you know, like temple run kind of thing. Yeah, well, that's the nice thing about Nintendo, though. It's just, you just always get quality with it. That's what I always like. It's like, you really think about Nintendo. Like, in 30 years, have they really ever let you down? You Not know what really. I mean? No, they, they, every once in a while, there's... Right, every, every once, everybody's, like, you know, going to have a fault here and there. You know, my, my only real complaint in the last while is just, like, calm the fuck down on the new Super Mario Brothers style games. Give me, like, yeah. a Mario 64 style one. That's about my only complaint. But in general, I always just think, it's like, they never let me down. Mm-hmm. You know? That's how I feel, too. It's just like, I mean, people could say like, oh, yeah, well, the Wii U should have been more powerful. I'm like, yeah, but, you know, why do I buy a Wii U? Because I want Nintendo games. So they're saying I'm never going to get those anywhere else. They're saying there's a possibility they might, because E3 is coming up pretty soon. They're saying there's a possibility they might they, this whole time. You know, you know how rumors are. There's this possibility uh, apparently this whole time they were working on a system that was a, that's about as strong as like a PS4 or uh, the Xbox One or whatever the fuck you want to call it. And uh, I'm still not used to saying Xbox One. It's still like, yeah. It's confusing because when I think Xbox One in my head, I think, oh, the original Xbox. Yeah. So whatever, the, that thing. So <laughs> there's, they're, still, they're still saying like, yeah, it's going to be as strong. It's, it's, they're working on another system that's about as strong as those. That's just something you kind of hear. I don't know how true that is. And Nintendo, they're actually, because before, they were, whenever, like, E3, because they're one of the only ones that doesn't have, like, a huge conference. Like, we're bringing a bunch of people. We're just jamming them all in a room. Look at this screen, everybody! You know? Now it's just kind of like, Nintendo's like, yeah, we're just going to... They're almost doing kind of like the Beatles thing. Like, yeah, we're done doing concerts. We're just going to record. We're going to throw it out there. People will see it where everybody else is still putting all this money into like their presentation. Like, hey, everybody, come check this shit out. And like, it's one of those things at E3. It always annoys me when they're doing a presentation at E3 and they're showing the actual like footage of the game and then it cuts to the audience. It's like, I don't give a fuck what that audience is doing. I want to know what's going on yeah. in the fucking game. Nobody wants to see the stupid audience reaction track that's going on. Put From something a distance cool on where there. it's all dark where I can't really see anything anyway, you know? Yeah. No, that's just one of those ones. It's just like... But <laughs> like Nintendo's good about just here. that. And you know, it's, it's, here's the weird thing, too. It's like, you know, I still look at a lot of the games for, like, you know, PS4 and Xbox One, and I'm like, you know, I'm I'm more interested in what's coming out for Nintendo. Like, their games look more appealing. The the There's the two big games that are coming out for me, and you, pretty much, for PlayStation, which is um, Metal Gear Solid Five and Batman. But, like... In Fallout Four, actually, that tr- new trailer you showed me. Yeah, I, which I'm sweet. really, I'm really looking forward to that one. That is one of those very kind of vague trailers, but still, it showed me just. It's not one of those ones that just shows like shit I've already seen in a title. It, it's it's vague, but shows me just enough to get me excited for it. Exactly. So I mean, there there is like the games coming out for it, but overall, it's just like, you know, I think about it in the last while, it's just been. Um, you know, up to a point where Nintendo has kind of like had games coming out, and I look at the PlayStation and Xbox roster, and I mean, I guess for different people, like you know, there's certain games that really appeal to them. But I guess to me, the, lots of those games, like they don't. Almost like the older I get, I will say that generally, I look more forward to sort of the I'm not gonna say like kid friendly genre, but almost like that sort of the family entertainment of Nintendo kind of characters like that to me strange enough science appeals more than some of these like this is dark this is violent and i think when it's like i don't know it just doesn't feel as natural like we're something like resident evil when it came out it's just like that's kind of how it happened because i guess because it seems because y- you know this it's not trying to like force it it's like all right well, that's mario that's what mario is this is metroid that's what metroid is where you got all these things that are trying to kind of like learn and ha- like from each other which that's not always a bad thing but it's sometimes it seems kind of like they're being more trendy rather than doing like uh rather than let it happen organically i mean i know it's kind of hard to differentiate that line sometimes but yeah it sometimes just has that feeling like this is a dope game and it's just like oh well, okay mm-hmm. you know d- 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 have to push that in my face yeah. but um well that's probably a good place to wrap it all up at um, make sure to go to oldmanorange.com and uh, show your support there, whether you want to 
Share the podcast, share the videos, the cartoons, so on. Tell everybody you know. Rate us on iTunes, all that good stuff. Um, Till then, I'm Spencer Scott Holmes. I'm Ryan Dunnigan. You can follow me at Twitter at Dunnigan Ryan. And you can follow me at Spencer S. Holmes on Twitter. And until then, we will see you some other time. Later. Thanks for listening to the Old Man Orange Podcast. Check out our website at oldmanorange.com for even more podcasts, cartoons, videos, music, and more. Send us an email at oldmanorangepodcast at yahoo.com. Be sure to subscribe, share, rate, and review us on iTunes, Podomatic, or any of the other fine sites we might be located on. If you want to help out even more, click on the Amazon or GameStop links on our webpage before you make any purchases there. It won't cost you a penny, but it sends us a little something our way. Thanks again, and tune in next week for more Old Man Orange Podcast. Now it just sounds like a fucking pity party. Like, I have no problem taking silver. I'll, I'll, I'll be fucking tails. It's, it's not a big deal. <laughs> it probably sounds like that. But... <laughs> <laughs> I have no problem being tails. I don't want it to sound like that. But... <laughs> you know, if you listen to the songs in like oh. fucking Sonic Adventure, it's all like the Sonic songs are all kind of like, yeah, I'm free, I'm being who I am. And then like the tail songs are all kind of like tail songs like, I got a best friend, I wish I was him. You know? <laughs> When your best friend is cooler than you. <laughs> yeah. And he does all the things that you wish you could do. I want to fly high so I can keep up with my friend who kind of leaves me behind and keeps on running <laughs> even if I die. <laughs> Wait, first when you said like, like, like I'll just play his tails, like all I pictured was just playing Sonic the Hedgehog 2 where like you get like the second player plays tails, but like you really don't get a play until like the game fucking stops for the boss because you can never keep up. <laughs> oh, no, exactly. I mean, you could even pass them, but then the game would keep on going. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's because it the camera doesn't follow tails now.